Sunberg has made great improvements to defensive skills, and while it is important to build for offensive skills, you shouldn't get too caught up in all these meta speedrunning builds because, let's be real, 99.99% of us aren't speedrunners, and everyone's going to make a mistake and get hit here and there. So while you should be building for skills like attack boost or weakness exploit, you shouldn't ignore cheap and efficient defensive skills that will help prevent feints or help prevent failing the quest altogether. And in this video, I will rank my top 5 defensive skills that every weapon can use. Of course, this is just a subjective ranking and there are plenty of other defensive skills, so if there's something that I don't mention, then you can talk about it in the comment section. And of course, certain defensive skills can be specific to certain weapons, like guard for example, but I won't be mentioning those since, well obviously your longsword can't use guard. So with that out of the way, let's begin with number 5, which is Fortify. For level 2 decoration slot, it grants a 10% attack boost and a 15% defense boost every time you faint during a quest, and it stacks up to 2 times. If you're really struggling to defeat some monsters, then this is an amazing skill to have since every time you faint, you will turn stronger and tankier, hence making the fight easier. The only downside of Fortify is that its usefulness begins to fall off once you become better and better at the game. So if you find yourself not fainting too frequently anymore, then you should replace Fortify with a more valuable level 2 decoration. At number 4 we have Kushala's Blessing, specifically Kushala's Blessing level 3. This grants the ability to gradually restore health past red, an effect also known as Super Recovery. It only costs 3 level 1 slots, and 2 levels of Kushala's Blessing can be found efficiently on Risen Kushala's chest piece, which also features 2 levels each of Attack Boost, Razor Sharp, and Spare Shots, and has a level 3, a level 2, and a level 1 slot. This is a great skill to have just to passively heal off some damage taken and top off on health. It can also synergize with recovery speed to recover the red portion of your health bar faster so Kushala's Blessing can activate faster. It works with recovery up so Kushala's Blessing will restore even more health over time. It stacks with Super Recovery Dango and Gourmet Fish for even faster health recovery. And it is one of the ways to mitigate the health drain from Berserk, if that's your thing. Moving on to number 3, we have Stun Resistance. At level 3, it prevents stun entirely, and it only costs 3 level 1 decoration slots. Which by the way, if an armor piece doesn't have 3 slots on it already, then you can Curious Armor Craft in an extra level 1 slot relatively easily. Now stun is a status effect that every monster in a game can inflict on you, and in particular, all anomaly monsters can do that Curio Bomb attack, which will always stun if you get hit by it. Of course, if you get stunned, then the monster will likely attack you again and possibly cause a faint especially if you're playing single player. Level 3 stun resistance will prevent that, so it's a great defensive skill to bring. For number 2, we have Defiance. It effectively grants earplugs, tremor resistance, wind resistance, and defense boost whenever the monster is enraged, so it's kinda like the defensive version of Agitator. But just like Agitator, enraging the monster is a very trivial condition to meet, which basically means Defiance is active almost all the time. Furthermore, at level 5, Defiance can also negate Powerful Roars and Dragon Wind, something Earplugs and Wind Resistance can't do. But even at level 1 or level 3, Defiance is still extraordinarily efficient, especially since it's a level 1 decoration, and there is little reason not to put Defiance in your builds. Now before I talk about number 1, I want to talk about two honorable mentions, starting with Blood Rite. It's essentially just like health regen augment from Monster Hunter World, except it only works on broken parts. Now there are a couple reasons why I don't have it in the top 5. The first reason is that it's a little too inefficient to build for, especially if you want higher levels of blood rights. As of title update 3, the only armor pieces that include blood rights are Malzino chest piece, which comes with 1 level, and the waist piece, which comes with 2 levels, and neither armor pieces are that efficient. Additionally, the decoration for Blood Rite is a level 3 decoration, so it has to compete with other really good decorations. And in order to craft it, you need to be Anomaly rank 181, which if you aren't there already, it's going to be a long grind. Even I don't have the decoration unlocked. The second reason is that it's a redundant skill to have for Anomaly quests. This is because all afflicted monsters can give you Blood Blight, which grants you health regen anyways, so there's really no reason to build for Blood Right there. The other honorable mention is Divine Blessing. At level 3, this grants a 25% chance to reduce damage taken by 50%. 
Now, Divine Blessing has always been a great defensive skill and can sometimes come in clutch. But just like Blood Rites, there aren't really any efficient armor pieces that have Divine Blessing except maybe the Gorathian chest piece, and a decoration for Divine Blessing is level 2 decoration. Divine Blessing is also obsoleted by another armor skill called Intrepid Hearts, which I have at number 1. At level 1, you get a special gauge above your health bar that fills up as you attack the monster. And once you fill the gauge, the next time you get hit by an attack that would have otherwise knocked you back, you not only take 50% reduced damage, but you also get the rock steady effect. At level 2, the only difference is that you'll take 75% reduced damage, and there will be a little explosion every time Intrepid Heart procs. But honestly, level 1 is already powerful enough. Not only does it do more than what Divine Blessing does, but also it doesn't rely on RNG to activate. Now Intrepid Heart can be found efficiently on the Flaming Espionage arm piece, which features 1 level Intrepid Hearts, 1 level of Attack Boost, 2 levels each of Razor Sharp and Spare Shots, a level 4 slot, and a level 2 slot. Intrepid Heart can also be found on a Flaming Espionage leg piece, but for certain weapons, it has competition with other really good leg pieces such as Violet Mizutunes. As of Title Update 3, these are the only ways to get Intrepid Heart as far as I know, but it's what I consider to be the best defensive skill in the game and it's something I strongly recommend building for if you can. And that's it. Those are my top defensive skills in a Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Again, of course, there are a bunch of other defensive skills that exist, so if you want to talk about another defensive armor skill that wasn't mentioned, then feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. I do want to mention that I'm nearing 1000 subscribers, which will be a huge milestone since then I can get my videos monetized which would be very nice since these videos do take effort to make. So if you want to support me and my channel, then the best thing you can do is subscribe. It's literally free and it would be greatly appreciated. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.